Well, hey everyone, Steve Patterson here from PhotoshopEssentials.com. In this video, I'll show you how to turn photos into fun and colorful twirl art effects in Photoshop. We'll even take things further and mirror the image to create symmetrical twirl art designs. I'll be using Photoshop CC, but any version from CS3 and up will work. Thanks for joining me, and let's get started. Open the image you want to use for this effect. I'll use this image that I downloaded from Adobe Stock. The first thing we'll want to do is duplicate and resize our image. The reason is that to create the twirl art effect, we'll be using smart filters and we'll be experimenting with their settings. Smart filters can be very demanding on your computer and a large high resolution image can really slow things down. What you'll want to do instead is work on a separate, smaller version of your image. Once you're happy with the results, you can upscale the effect to the original original size. We'll learn how to do that later. To duplicate the image, go up to the image menu in the menu bar and choose duplicate. In the dialog box, name the image twirl and then click OK. A copy of the image opens in a separate document, which we can see by looking at the document tabs along the top. To resize the image and make it smaller, go back up to the image menu and this time choose image size. This opens the image size dialog box. If we look at the dimensions in the upper right, we see that my image currently has a width of 4,500 pixels and a height of nearly 3,000 pixels. To reduce the size of the image, first make sure that the resample option is checked and that it's set to automatic. Then enter a new size into the width and height fields. I'll set both of them to 50%. In the dimension section at the top, we see that this will reduce the width of my image to 2,250 pixels and the height to 1,500 pixels, which should keep things running faster. Click OK to resize the image and close the dialog box. I'll zoom in on the image by going up to the View menu and choosing Fit on Screen. And now we're ready to create our twirl art effect. Before we can start adding smart filters, we first need to convert our image into a smart object. In the Layers panel, we see the image on the background layer. Double-click on the name Background to rename it. In the New Layer dialog box, name the layer Photo, and then click OK. Then click the menu icon in the upper right of the Layers panel, and choose Convert to Smart Object. A smart object icon appears in the lower right of the layer's preview thumbnail, letting us know that the layer is now a smart object. The first filter we'll apply is Mesotint. Go up to the Filter menu, choose Pixelate, and then choose Mesotint. This opens the Mesotint Filters dialog box. This filter adds random, high contrast and highly saturated strokes, lines or dots to the image depending on which setting you choose for the type option at the bottom. And this will add more detail as well as more contrast and color to the effect. There's no correct setting to choose here, so we'll come back later and experiment. For now, I'll choose Long Strokes. Click OK to close the dialog box. And here's the result. If we look in the Layers panel, we see the Mesotint filter listed as our first Smart Filter. Next, we need to blur the image using Photoshop's Radial Blur filter. And to create the amount of blur we need, we'll run the filter three times. Go up to the Filter menu, choose Blur, and then choose Radial Blur. In the Radial Blur dialog box, set the amount to 100, the Blur method to Zoom, and the quality to draft. Using the lowest quality setting will let the filter run as quickly as possible. Click OK to close the dialog box and apply the filter. And here's what the first pass of Radial Blur looks like. The result is very noisy because we had the quality set so low, but we'll clean it up in a moment. To apply Radial Blur a second time, go back up to the filter menu, and because Radial Blur was the last filter we used, you'll find it at the top of the list. Leave all the settings the same and just click OK. Photoshop applies the filter a second time. Go back up to the Filter menu and once again choose Radial Blur. This time change the quality from Draft to Best and then click OK. Since we've increased the quality, the filter will take a bit longer to run, but the final result looks much better and the noise from the first two passes is gone. In the Layers panel, we see all three passes of the Radial Blur filter listed as separate Smart Filters above the Mesotint filter. 
To add the twirl to the twirl art effect, we'll use Photoshop's twirl filter. Go up to the filter menu, choose distort, and then choose twirl. In the twirl dialog box, use the angle slider along the bottom to twist and twirl the image around its center. The further you drag, the greater the effect. To keep things simple, I'll set my angle to 120 degrees. Click OK to close the dialog box, and now the image is swirling around its center. In the Layers panel, we see the Twirl filter listed as a Smart filter above the others. If you want to try a different Twirl amount at any time, double-click on the Twirl filter's name to reopen its dialog box. Drag the angle slider left or right, and then click OK to accept it. I'm happy with my current setting, so I'll click Cancel to close out of it. You can also go back and try different settings for the Mesotint filter. Double-click on its name to reopen the dialog box. This time, Photoshop will pop open a message telling you that your other smart filters will be turned off while you're editing the Mesotint filter. And that's because Photoshop applies smart filters from bottom to top. So in this case, it's applying Mesotint first, then each of the three radial blur filters, and then the twirl filter. To show an accurate preview of the Mesotint filter, it needs to turn off those other filters temporarily. Click OK to accept it. In the Mesotint filter dialog box, I'll change the type from long strokes to something different, like coarse dots. And then I'll click OK. Photoshop turns the other smart filters back on, and here's the result. The coarse dot setting gives us less contrast and color saturation, but we also see more detail in the lines. You can compare your new filter setting with your previous setting by pressing Ctrl-Z on a Windows PC or Command-Z on a Mac. Press it once to undo your last step and view your previous setting, which in my case was long strokes. Press Ctrl or Command-Z again to redo the step and view the new setting which is coarse dots. In my case, I like the higher contrast version better, so I'll press Ctrl or Command Z to switch back to long strokes. Next, we need to make a copy of our smart object. In the Layers panel, click on the smart object and drag it down onto the new layer icon. A copy with all of our smart filters applied appears above the original. Double click on the twirl filter below the copy to open its dialog box. Then, drag the angle slider so the copy is twirling in the opposite direction. Since I used a value of 120 for my original twirl, I'll set the copy to negative 120. Of course, you don't have to make them exact opposites. I'm just keeping things simple. Click OK to close the dialog box. And now the copy is swirling in the opposite direction. To create the actual twirl art effect, we need to blend both of our twirls together. We can do that by changing the blend mode of the photocopy smart object. You'll find the blend mode option in the upper left of the layers panel. By default, it's set to normal. The three blend modes that usually work best for this effect are darken, lighten, and pin light. I'll start with darken. The Darken Blend Mode looks at both layers, or both smart objects in this case, and keeps whichever pixels between them that are darker. Next, I'll try the Lighten Blend Mode. Lighten is the opposite of Darken. It keeps whichever pixels between the two layers that are lighter. And if I switch to the Pin Light Blend Mode, we see that Pin Light creates a combination of the Darken and Lighten modes. For this image, I think I like the Lighten Blend Mode the best, so I'll go with that. Now at this point, you can still go back and experiment with different filter settings for either of the two smart objects. Just double-click on a twirl or mesotint filter to reopen its dialog box and make your changes. For example, I'll double-click on the mesotint filter for the photocopy smart object. Photoshop again pops open the message telling me that the smart filters above it will be turned off while I'm editing the filter. I'll click OK to accept it. Then I'll change the type option from long strokes to the same coarse dot setting we tried earlier. And this time, with the top smart object set to coarse dots and the bottom one set to long strokes, we see a combination of the more detailed and the higher contrast effects. Again, we can switch back and forth between the current and previous filter setting by pressing Ctrl-Z on a Windows PC or Command-Z on a Mac. 
And in this case, I think I still prefer the higher contrast look for both of the twirls. So I'll press Ctrl or Command Z to switch back to long strokes. You can also try turning off one of the radial blur filters for the photocopy smart object. You'll want to leave the top radial blur filter on, the one directly below the twirl filter, since that's the one we applied with the highest quality. But you can turn off either of the other two radial blur filters below it by clicking the filter's visibility icon. I'll turn off the bottom one, and this adds a bit more sharpness and contrast to the effect. So at this point, the main twirl artifact is done, but we've only applied it to the smaller version of our image. Well, let's upscale the effect by replacing the small version with our original high-resolution image. To do that, first switch over to the document that holds the original image by clicking on its tab. Select the image by going up to the Select menu and choosing All. Then go up to the Edit menu and choose Copy. Switch back to the Twirl Effect document by clicking its tab. Then, in the Layers panel, double-click on either of the Smart Object thumbnails. This opens the contents of our Smart Object, which in this case is the smaller version of our image in another separate document. Paste the original image into the document by going up to the Edit menu and choosing Paste. Now, since the original image is larger than the smaller version, it won't initially fit in the document. Much of it will be cropped away. To view the entire image, go up to the Image menu and choose Reveal All. And this tells Photoshop to expand the size of the canvas so that the entire image is visible. To officially replace the Smart Object contents with the original image, we need to save the document. Go up to the File menu and choose Save. You'll see a progress bar letting you know that Photoshop is updating the Smart Object. When it's done, you can close the document by going up to the File menu and choosing Close. Now back in the Twirl Effects document, we again have the same problem. Most of the effect is being cropped away. And again, it's because the original image is larger than the smaller version we were using. We need to render the effect again, this time with the larger image. To do that, all we need to do is go back up to the Image menu and once again choose Reveal All. Now this part can take some time, so you'll see another progress bar letting you know that Photoshop is rendering the smart filters. When it's done, to view the entire high-resolution effect, go up to the View menu and choose Fit on Screen. And that's how to upscale the effect to the original full-size image. Well, let's finish things off by learning how to create a symmetrical twirl art effect. In the Layers panel, make sure the Photo Copy Smart Object is selected at the top. Then, on your keyboard, press Shift, Control, Alt, and E on a Windows PC, or Shift, Command, Option, E on a Mac. This merges both Smart Objects onto a new layer above them named Layer 1. And this time, we're working with a normal layer, not a Smart Object, so you won't see any Smart Filters applied to it. Go up to the Edit menu, Choose Transform, and then choose Flip Horizontal. This flips the layer horizontally to create a mirror version of the effect. And finally, to create the symmetrical effect, change the blend mode of the layer to either Darken, Lighten, or Pin Light. I'll start with Darken, which gives me this effect here. Then I'll try Lighten, which gives me a different look. And finally, I'll try Pin Light. And I think in this case, I like the darkened version the best. And there we have it. That's how to create symmetrical twirl artifacts in Photoshop. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider liking it, sharing it, and subscribing to our channel. Visit our website, photoshopessentials.com, for more tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm Steve Patterson from photoshopessentials.com.